Praise the Lord this morning, saints. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the King's Road broadcast coming to you live, 6 a.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. Here on Spreaker and on YouTube. We put these up on YouTube also. And praise God for it. We just bless God for His Word today. Amen. Father God, we thank you. Thank you for your mercy to us sending your son to die on the cross the lamb of god the sacrifice you're pleased with father hallelujah oh thank you for raising your son from the dead hallelujah and thank you jesus for ascending into heaven hallelujah where you took your seat at the Father's right hand, hallelujah, in a flesh and bone body. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for pouring out your precious Holy Spirit upon your church, in your church, in our hearts. You dwell by the Holy Spirit, you and the Father, and the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. You had the perfect plan, and you're working it out right now in our lives today. We ask you to help us to get out of the way. And let you have your perfect work in us today. Let us be being filled more and more with your spirit, Lord. Just to overflowing and trampling down the enemy. Hallelujah. Crushing all the works of darkness. Taking every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Lord, you have your perfect way with your saints today. And you teach us in the way we should go, Lord. For at your right hand, Lord, are pleasures forevermore. Hallelujah. More than this world could even think of giving. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. This is part two of Jacob and Esau. We're going to be in Malachi chapter two today. But before we go there, I'm going to read some things to you here. <clears throat> this is not just this is not just to tell you about Jacob and Esau, okay? This is about to tell us and God wants to show us revelation, understanding and knowledge today about Jacob being God's chosen. Before he was born, God chose him, okay? And Esau being the one that God did not choose. Okay, God did not choose Esau to be the leader of the family. He chose Jacob before they were born. Okay, now Rebecca knew this, I said this yesterday, but for some reason, and it's because of the flesh, it has to go down to the flesh. And she was telling her son Jacob all these things that she knew that God had spoke to her. And so what did he do when his, his brother came in hungry? He bought the birthright. He see he finagled him. See he he said, "You sell me your birthright. I'll give you this food." See, his brother was only thinking about the flesh. Okay, think about that principle now. The Jacob principle is God has chosen us. Amen. The world comes along and says, "I tell you what, if you just compromise a little bit, I'll keep giving to your work. I'll keep doing this. I'll keep doing that for you. Just compromise a little bit, right here. You see." No, God says, don't do that. Don't compromise. Reinhard Bonnke, remember his story? He said, when he first started his ministry, now Reinhard Bonnke reached millions of people. The Lord used him to reach millions of people in Africa and around the world, okay? And this person came and gave him this large gift. Remember, they were going to give him this like humongous, like three or four million dollars. This is way back in the 60s, I think. And the Lord told him, don't take that gift. The Lord said no. He knew that gift was tainted. It was. It had tentacles on it that were going to try to control him. God said don't do it. Boy, he was really tempted to take it for the ministry. Oh, God told him not to, and he didn't. And then his ministry took off, you see, because God provided as he needed as he went, went along. The principle, Jacob... Walking by the spirit. Esau, walking by the flesh. Boils down to that. And also Jacob <coughs> wanted to help God out. You know. Right. He's already told what God said about the deal. Mm -hmm. But he thought he'd help God out. Right. 
he had the opportunities, so he just thought he'd help him. And that's what Rebecca <laughs> was helping and him. That's what she His did mama too. Mama was helping him, even though she knew what God had said. That's right. She wanted to assure that that happened. Right. You know. That's right. So, in other words, let me just do this, God. I don't want to wait on you. Let me just do it. Now, I was thinking earlier about this Esau. Okay. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that Esau didn't have a chance. You understand? Let me let me explain. We read it yesterday in chapter 1 where it says, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Okay. But yet Esau, listen to this in Genesis 26, 34 and 35. And Esau was 40 years old, and he took to wife Judith, the daughter of Beri, the Hittite, and Bashamath, the daughter of Elon, the Hittite. Okay, the Hittites were an evil people, which were a grief of mind unto Isaac and Rebekah. It was a grief of mind to them that he took wives of the Canaanites, okay? Genesis 27:46 and Rebekah said to Isaac, I am weary of my life because of the daughters of Heth. If Jacob take a wife of the daughters of Heth, such as these which are of the daughters of the land, what good shall my life do me? She was telling her husband, listen, I don't want Jacob. Jacob don't want I don't want him taking a wife of these Canaanite women, okay? And so they shipped Jacob off to Laban. We know the story. And God had, that was all in God's plan because Jacob had to come to the realization that God is the one who is in control. Not Abraham, not Isaac, not Jacob, not Moses, not me, not Sharon, not you. God is the one who is in control. Okay, this is a very hard thing to learn when you're a very, let's just say, an outgoing person. You know what I mean? Uh, no, no, no. God says, let me outgo. Okay, let me go out of you. You see, <laughs> this is what the Lord is saying. Now, listen to this. It boils down to the, to the Lord doing the work or us getting in the way. See, we cooperate with God. He does not cooperate with us. Okay? God doesn't come to us and get our ideas and say, what do you think I should do here, John? God doesn't do that, okay? God says, John, this is what I want to do. Sharon, this is what I want to do. And we say, yes, Lord. Or we might say, well, Lord, don't you think there's a better way to do that? See, <laughs> that's right, right? We might say that, see? Because that's the old nature. That's the, the Esau principle is, I'm going to go get it. I'm going to go do it. Mm -hmm. The Jacob principle is, God, what do you want me to do today? Show me. See? Now, you know, if God's called you into a certain specific vein of ministry, as he has us, I don't have to ask God, Lord, do you want me to preach the gospel today? I know he wants me to preach the gospel today. But I do meditate and seek the Lord and say, Lord, what is the message you want to bring to your church today, to your people today? You see? And I ask the Lord. And so he lays it on my heart, like he did yesterday, about Jacob and Esau. It's so important because there's so many Esau's in, quote, Christianity today who are going and doing for God. See, when God says, if you would stop doing for me, I could do through you and we could get more work done. See, well, actually, the doing has a root to it. <coughs> And it's rooted in self. Self, right? That's, okay. That's Bring it how out. I believe it could be in Esau. Amen. Principle. Amen. Because the Lord is. That's it. You got it right there. Right there. The Lord yeah. is like, He <clears throat> wants us to have motives for His glory. Amen. Amen. Not for self. Amen. That's what He wants the motive to be in what we do, quote unquote, for Him. That's right. It's to be for His glory. And for his purpose. And Lord, are you pleased with this? You know, that, that always needs to be uh, <coughs> in the forefront of our mind and heart. That's right. Now, listen to this out of Revelation chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. 
maybe verse 6. Yeah, verse 6 too. John to the seven churches. Who's John writing to? To the church. To those filled with the Spirit of God, which are in Asia. Grace be unto you and peace from and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come and from the seven spirits which are before his throne and from Jesus Christ who is the faithful witness the first begotten of the dead and the prince of the kings of the earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood hallelujah and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. See, we are kings and priests. That's important. We have dominion. We have rule. Hallelujah. And it begins right here in my mind. My spirit, man, I have to pay attention to what the spirit in me, the Holy Spirit in my spirit, man, speaking and take every thought captive unto the obedience of Christ. Okay? Because, saints, we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. If you're born again and filled with the Spirit of God, you know the Lord has saved you. And you're not ignorant of the devil's devices. We, we, the, we say, Lord, teach us how to be mindful. Set a guard upon my lips, O God, that I speak not ill advisedly. See, and, and when thoughts hit our mind, we know where that thought's coming from. Is it coming from the flesh? Coming from the world? Coming from the devil? See? There's always going to be an action going on around us, right? As Christians. Always. There's action. God says, what is my reaction? Okay? This is important. As a son of Jacob, as a son of of Israel as a son of the Lord Jesus I want my reaction to be according to God's purpose according to God's glory amen Amen. that's and vitally important what does the enemy always do though he tries to get us down on his level right which yeah. you can't be a priest and that's what he says he wants all of us to be the Lord wants all of us to be a priest amen and so he's trying to get us out of that position by trying to get us into the flesh and pulling us down and beating us down with thoughts and doubts and all kinds of stuff like that. So then we're not being priests and stuff. That's right. In that kind of mindset. <clears throat> so we have to throw it off, you know, because the enemy, is, he'll attack. But it doesn't mean we have to believe him or even entertain what he's saying to us. We have to rebuke it and throw it off. And like you said, take captive every thought. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Now, Malachi chapter 2. I'm going to read the first verse, okay? And now, O ye, what? And now, O ye, priests. priests. Now, we're kings and priests. This commandment is for you. This is the word of the Lord, okay? This commandment is for you. And the, the heading of this the heading of this chapter is what it what is it, Sharon? In the read that. The Lord rebukes the priest. The Lord rebukes <laughs> the priest. Okay. And now, O ye priest, this commandment is for you. Verse two. If ye will not hear. Mm. And if ye will not lay it to heart to give glory unto my name, saith the Lord of hosts, I will even send a curse upon you. Wow. And I will curse your blessings. Oh, Lord Jesus. Have Yea, mercy. I have cursed them already because ye do not lay it to heart. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast, and one shall take you away with it. Wow. Boy, that's... That's serious, that man. That really is. He's, I mean, God is really... He's starting out saying, you better listen to this. <laughs> and if you don't, whoa. 
Behold, I will corrupt your seed and spread dung upon your faces, even the dung of your solemn feast. What is he saying in that when they were doing their feasts? Is he saying that's what he thought of them? I'll spread dung upon your faces, and even the dung of your solemn feast. They were having all these gatherings and stuff, but it wasn't according to God's mind, see? And God is saying, I want, when you come together, God says, when you, my people, when you come together, I am to be the center and the circumference. I am to be the all in all. Not your little program, okay? But me. Just sit before me. Listen to me. Worship me. Praise me. Amen. And there's gatherings taking place, yes. And they're saying gatherings, Christian gatherings, different places, you know, even on the internet and stuff. But look at those gatherings. Look at what's being talked about in those gatherings. Right, right. Is it mostly a worldly thing? Or it's speaking it, about the world and things. Is it getting into prayer and really the meat of the gospel and uh, understanding and this and that? Or is it mostly just, uh, you know, let's just stay on the surface of things so I can feel comfortable? you got to look at it. That's right. What are you gathering with? Because the Lord says in his word, they gathered, but not by me. Amen. There's a lot gathering, but not by him, not by his spirit. They're not gathering. They're gathering because they want their own thing. They want to be the head of that thing. And so they're gathering there. Or they're living in sin, and this gathering makes them feel a little bit more comfortable because it stays on the surface of things doesn't get down deep and you know probe right you know that's right so hey i'm comfortable here <coughs> i feel better here i feel better about myself it goes it, it, it i didn't want to cut you yeah, off go ahead. it goes back to what the lord showed me years ago about these preachers a lot of these preachers they know a lot of the word and they know the message okay that really needs to be preached, but they're afraid to preach it because they're afraid of getting fired and losing their paycheck, losing their parsonage, okay? And they've got three children, and they, instead of, and so what they do is they take this sword, the sword of the Spirit, the Word, and they wave it up and down in the congregation. I mean, they're going, boy, they're, that, that's a beautiful word. Oh, what a wonderful word, Pastor, you see. But the Bible says that the Word is what? the sword of the spirit the word of god okay it divides asunder between the joint the marrow and the soul and the spirit it reveals the thoughts the intents the motives of the heart okay and so the sword has to come into the body of christ not shown to the body of christ so that i think that's what you were saying they it's like they're just you know saying all these things but are they really in it living it right. letting the word have its perfect work in their life and a lot of times the Lord, you know, the Lord wants us to come and be in His <coughs> presence alone. Right, right. So that He can show us some things about our heart or bring conviction or something. And maybe sometimes we try to avoid that, avoid getting alone with God. Because we know He's going to say something that we're going to go, oh, you know. <laughs> that's right <laughs> so but we don't want to avoid that if the Lord is calling us to get more intimate more with him intimate and he is him. he is calling his people to, that's right and he is yeah because in his presence nothing is going to be hidden that's right you can't say but God this or that because he already knows everything that's right he knows the thoughts. He knows the motives. He knows what we do. You think about Daniel. And Daniel, the Bible says, he was a man of God. You know, He was a holy man of God, Daniel. But yet when the Lord came to him, he went down as a dead man on his face I before know. God. And That's what you do before the true presence that's right. of God. That's right. You've got to go down. 
So if there's a lifting up in that, I just I question that. I know. When I, I know. hear it from other preachers or whatever, such a lifting up spirit about being in the presence of God, and I'm I'm thinking, well, in all my experience, I never experienced nothing like that. Oh, it's man. always going down on my face. It's when the Lord comes close, when He pulls back the veil. I mean, the Lord is in us. Okay. I mean, Holy God lives inside of us. Holy Jesus, Holy Jehovah mighty God but when he pulls that veil back man it 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 throws you down it really does because you can't stand before that glory oh hallelujah praise just God just like this morning I woke up and I immediately and I have felt it a lot lately it's just that trembling like a quake in my spirit even on waking up like the Lord, the Lord, the Lord is there. Oh, he's in us, and He's letting us know, "I am with you. Right. I am with you. I will protect you. I will keep I you. I will guide you. I will keep you. Praise you know." God. And He's letting you know that on the very get-go of waking up in the morning, and that's just an awesome thing to know. He's not something way out there in. A, ethereal space you know he right. is real he's here and he is in us he lives in us Hallelujah. and he talks to us and he impresses us things he wants us to do and where he wants us to go and hallelujah it's just an awesome thing you know if you're not saved today and you're listening to this you are totally missing out on life. That's right. On a continuous way of life. Ever expanding. Ever expanding. Hallelujah. God's always surprising. Hallelujah. You know, there, there's a little picture where these two little kids are looking up and they said, and they're smiling and they're saying, I know that was you, God. You know? <laughs> and he just does stuff all the time and then he speaks, you know, in all kinds of things, in nature and everything. And he loves you so much, too, because Amen. he came and died. That's right. So if you're not a Christian today, you can be. Amen. Just repent of your sins. Believe the gospel. Believe the gospel. Hallelujah. Cry out to God to change you. To change you. You're sick of the way you're living. You don't want to live that way anymore. You want to have life. Ask Him to save you. Ask Him to put a deep love for His Word right in your heart. Amen? Because His Word is His commandment. His commandment is good. It's holy. It's not grievous. Amen? Hallelujah. And He will come in and He will abide. Am I saying this is a cakewalk, easy way? No, I'm not saying that at all. It's a hard way. His commandment is life. But the deal <laughs> is... God. That he is right with us, helping us in this walk. That's right. He keeps us dependent because that's the way he wants it. Mm. Praise God. He wants it that way. He, he actually wants uh, us to be weak in ourselves so that we can be strong. Right. He can be strong in us. That's right. See, that's the deal. That flesh man wants to take over. Right. That Esau principle wants to take over and try to override. And that's what the serpent continually tries to get all of us to do. Right. Step into that old coat of Esau. <laughs> <laughs> and we have to say no. 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 You know, he, he'll give all these things of how much, you know, the argument of, well, it sure will be worth it if you do. No, it won't be worth it. You know, we have to know what's more important, and that is spiritual things. Amen. Spiritual things. The Lord always veered off into the spiritual. He looked at things at the spiritual. He walked in the spiritual. That's the way he wants us to do, that's too. That's right. That's right. Verse 4, Malachi 2, 4. And ye shall know that I have sent this commandment unto you, that my covenant might be with Levi, saith the Lord of hosts. My covenant was with him of life, 
and peace. And peace. Do you hear that? Mm, what did he say? Of life and peace. And life and peace. And I gave them. See, he gives us a peace that the, we the can't. We can't, can't understand, right. and That's neither right. can the world. It's, it's can a understand peace that surpasses it. all understanding. And I gave them. And I gave them to him, for the fear where wherewith he feared me, and was afraid before my name there on the mount when they went and they jumped on the side with Moses and and Moses said gird your swords on and go through the camp and and, and 3,000 people died that day lots of people died that day okay hallelujah 5,000 I, I forget how many and then hallelujah because he was afraid before the Lord's name he had a holy fear and reverence for God verse 6 the law of truth was in his <coughs> mouth and iniquity was not found in his lips he walked with me in peace and equity and did turn many away from iniquity. Oh, hallelujah. Now, when you said that, I just, I thought about chapter 3. We're going to be there tomorrow. And how John the Baptist was of the tribe of Levi. John the Baptist. And he turned many away from the devil and brought him to repentance and cried out. He was the messenger. He was the preparer. See, that's another part of being a priest is you prepare the way okay you see what I'm saying you prepare the way for your family you prepare the way for others if you have a family that's rebellious and they're just worldly and you know oh yeah oh yeah Jesus came yeah you know but they're not walking it you keep being the example you keep walking faithful with the Lord because that's preparing there's a time coming when God's going to show your family, summon your family. Jesus said his word divides families. And there's, you can't get around that word. You know what I mean? It's going to divide the family. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. And let the Lord have his way. Hallelujah. Verse 7. For the priest's lips should keep knowledge. Should keep knowledge. Amen. And they should seek the law at his mouth. Yes. For he is the messenger of the Lord of, the Lord of, of hosts. hosts. Oh, hallelujah. Now look at verse 8. This is so sad. Because this is what Israel had come to. You see. Keep going. But ye are departed out of the way. Ye have caused many to stumble at the law. And you see that today. Boy, that makes me just almost cry right there. I know. Because I think of instances where we have known personally people that have done exactly that right they've departed out of the way and they've caused others to stumble at the law so at the word of god see the law is the word amen hallelujah ye have corrupted the covenant of levi saith the lord of hosts oh lord have mercy therefore have i also made you contemptible and base before all the people According as ye have not kept my ways, but have been partial in the law. In other words, they didn't bring forth the whole truth. See, they, they and it's not. It's happening like that today right. because there's fear of uh, making somebody mad, or you know, with preachers, fear of losing their support. Right. If they really preach the whole gospel of God. Or they'll get a little bit of uh, notoriety and then they'll just take off on any avenue that will bring them notoriety. Right. It goes to the head, see, right. and oh, they're important to right. God, you know. And it's, it's so serious. Some of these, so serious. Some of these guys, they were, I mean, I uh, just keep going. I don't want to get into it. <laughs> Praise God. Have we not all one Father? Hath not one God created us? Why do we deal treacherously every man against his brother? Good question. By profaning, By the, profaning covenant the covenant of, of our, our fathers. fathers. See, and that's what, that's dealing treacherously with your brothers and sisters in Christ. When you don't hold to the true covenant of God. That's treacherous to God. That's dealing treacherously. That that makes us, I mean, it makes us weep to think, you know, to teach falsely. No! 
Ever, never. You no see, compromise. No, no compromise. The truth, man. You can't compromise. You cannot oh, compromise. Now, the fact is, and these things are going to happen if you're walking the true walk of the Lord and you're speaking the truth of the Word of God, the whole counsel of God, and you're not veering off and you're not compromising, and it's like a straight path, a straightforward truth. If you're doing that, now this is a fact. People will leave you, even professed Christians, because your life is bringing conviction to their life, because they're not walking it's, yeah, in the true that's right. whole gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, and they're not keeping God's ways. And, and they don't want to be around anyone that does. And they try to trip you up to make you not in God's way. It makes them feel better. So <laughs> you will have people leave. We've had many people leave because of the truth. Because we don't pull any punches. We go straight forward to the deal. No compromise. And believe me, if you're, if you're that way, and I pray that you are, then you already know people will leave. But you can't let that phase you. You can't let it phase you. You have to continue to go forward because who's, <clears throat> your, who's your captain? <laughs> who's our captain? Amen. Listen, we have a reward awaiting us, and that is mainly to see our precious Savior Hallelujah. and live with Him for eternity. This life we're living down here does not last very long. Amen. But we're talking about eternity forever and ever and ever and ever. Amen. Amen. Ruling and reigning with him. So whatever happens down here, even the sorrow, even the um, pain and the hurt of people leaving that you love very much, even that, listen, Whatever we have to go through, it, it's going to all be worth it in the Amen. end. Amen. I was just thinking. It's going to all be worth it in the end. Hallelujah. And do we still pray for those? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We have the grief of God's heart for these people. We can feel that we can actually feel the grief of God's heart for them. Yeah. Because, see, this is a fact, and we've seen it over the years. And we feel if, the mercy, too, of God's heart for them, man. If you, like I said, walk in the true way and you don't compromise, you're speaking the truth of God's word all the way, straightforward, no beating around the bush, okay? Then these things are going to happen, and we just have to know we it. Just, we just have That's to know right. it. And. We pray for people. We got to continue to pray for people, because you you don't want anyone on the wrong path. That's right, John. Amen. You don't want anyone on the wrong path. You don't want anyone to go to hell. Nobody. It's a terrible place, and you don't want that for anyone. So, we got to keep our hearts right through it all, through it all, no matter what. Hallelujah. Verse 11, Judah hath dealt treacherously, and an abomination is committed in Israel and in Jerusalem. For Judah hath profaned the holiness of the Lord which he loved, and hath married the daughter of a strange God. They were committing abominations. They were they had set up their statues of Moloch and Baal and Ashtaroth right there inside the temple. Manasseh even put them in the temple, okay, itself. They, they, they had blasphemed the Lord, okay. Verse 12. And profaned his holiness. Yeah. Now, what did he do? He gave warnings about not doing just exactly what these guys That's did. Right. That's <laughs> right. That's right. He gave warning. He even told them what would happen That's if they right. did. They had a rich history of what would happen. Amen. And so then what does he say? Because of this, the Lord will cut off the man that doeth this. Amen. The master and, and the, scholar the scholar out of the tabernacles of Jacob and him that offereth 
offereth an offering unto the Lord of hosts. So, so God says he's going to cleanse his church. He's Amen. going to cleanse his church. Amen. You know, we have a lot of this stuff going on now, too, with uh, people marrying knowingly a worldly person. They know they're worldly before they ever marry him. Right. But they're deliberately going into this covenant. And a lot of them know the word very, <coughs> very well. They know the word very well about being unequally yoked together. But their flesh is saying yes to doing it. And so are these guys too. Marrying the daughter of a strange God. Well, if you're marrying someone that is worldly and doesn't hold to the principles of God's word, and their life very much shows it even before you get married, then you're deliberately walking into a covenant that God has already told you no. Right. But what if you're deceived? And what if, what if you find out later you were wrong? I mean, and now you're married. I mean, what if, I mean, because it happens. It happens. Because people can put on a good front, you know what I mean? Whether it's a man or a woman, they can put on a good front, and then you get married to them, and you think it's the Lord, and it's not. Well, first of all, if you do know it, and you're already getting a check before you ever say, I do. Right. Then, first of all, you need to repent to the Lord for, for refusing to listen to Him and getting into something you shouldn't have got into. Right. And then you need to ask him, Lord, show me what you want me to do. Amen. And then be obedient to the Show Lord. me what you want me to do, Lord, in this situation. And he will. Sometimes he'll have someone, if they're pleased to dwell with them, to stay with them and just pray for them in, in hopes that they will turn as well That's right. and go the right way. You don't get anyone to turn by joining them. In their way. Right. In their wickedness. In their right. lifestyle. That's right. There's no way you're ever going to get anyone to turn onto the right path that way. That's right. Don't be deceived into thinking there is. Amen. As you stand and you're true to God's word and true to him. And you stand uncompromisingly. People see that. They see your life. So, verse, verse 13. Hallelujah. Amen. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, with weeping, and with crying. With crying out. Crying out, insomuch that he regardeth not the offering any more, or receiveth it with goodwill at your hand. Well, that's mm. a sad thing. That is there. very sad. It's very sad. So, see, even after they did what they did, and God said, oh, I'm going to cut off the man that doeth this. Mm -hmm. Verse 14, yet ye say, wherefore? Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously. Yet is she thy companion and the wife of thy covenant. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the Spirit. And wherefore one, that he might seek a godly seed. Therefore take heed to your spirit, and let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. In other words, God's saying, <clears throat> when you got saved and filled with the Spirit of God, you you became one with God. God, he, he says, we're one, okay? You don't go out after that. Be careful, because you'll, you could... Attach yourself to something what you were just speaking about what we're fixing to get to here in 1 Corinthians 2 Corinthians chapter 6 About something that's not the Lord see that's what God's saying. Why are you doing that? Don't you remember the day that I saved you? Don't you remember the sweet communion we had? Don't you know that I'm your father? I'm your husband. I'm your master. I'm your keeper. I'm everything to you. Why Judah? Celebrate praise and worship God. Are you running off to the world? See to hook up with the world. Why are you doing that? See? That's like bringing Baal into the temple. See? Same thing. God says, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, verse 17. Ye have wearied the Lord with your words. Oh, wow. Wow. Something, man. 
Yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When we say, Every one that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord, and he delighteth in them, where is the God of judgment? Or, let me read that too. He, ye have wearied the Lord with your words, yet ye say, Wherein have we wearied him? When ye say, everyone that doeth evil is good in the sight of the Lord. Do we hear that today in the church? Oh, boy. And he delighteth in them. Or, where is the God of judgment? Ooh, that's a scary... They, oh, no, you can't judge. That's a scary... You can't judge. No judge. When Jesus said in Matthew 7, Judge not, and ye shall not be judged. Jesus is talking about someone's eternal destiny. Okay? He's not saying don't judge uh, that person is doing evil, okay, when you recognize the evil. You understand? You make a determination. That person is of the devil, okay? When some person named Dark Lord Lucifer wants to be friends with us, we do not say, sure, let's be friends with Dark Lord Lucifer. No, 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 okay? You see what I'm saying? So, you make a right judgment. Yeah. See? And even sometimes, you know, this is <coughs> on Facebook a lot, but you can have people come in, but they're, they're not good, and they're not of the Lord, but they're play-acting like they are, because they got a purpose and right. a motive, see? But see, that purpose and motive is going to be revealed sooner or later. And God will reveal what's going on. And when he does, and when he shows you, you better make appropriate measures to disconnect from that. Amen. Whatever it is. That's right. And not try to reason it out in your mind. Well, they're going to be offended if I uh, unfriend, unfriend them. them or this or that. You know what? You better stop thinking like that. You be concerned if God's offended with your actions or your non-reactions he needs to be in the forefront Amen. of our mind that's right his glory his purpose and if you're going to ask him a question if we're going to ask him a question and ask him lord what's going on am i connected anywhere i shouldn't be connected and then if he shows you yeah you are right here are you just going to ignore that <laughs> man no, you're not going to ignore that. You're going to take appropriate measures to right. disconnect. That's right. Okay? That's right. That's right. 2 Corinthians 6.14. Let's do that verse right there. Be ye not unequally yoked. Mm. I'm going to go down here. For verse 14. And get what that word is. Be ye not unequally yoked together. Mm. Differently. Differently yoked. In other words, you're not one. Right. In doctrine or whatever. Right. Okay. That means you're not one in doctrine, in belief. You're discordantly. You know, how can two that don't agree agree walk together they can't that's right so that means you're you're yoked up discordantly right. and differently right now we are priests okay levi okay be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers unbelievers those mm. that are disbelieving without the christian faith the heathen right there there's be no, ye not there's no intimate fellowship there right. okay for what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness he's asking a question and the holy spirit's saying come on what fellowship has it and what communion hath light with darkness what does light do dispels, dispels the, darkness. the darkness okay you see it dispels the darkness now paul told timothy stir up the gift that is in you that you receive with the putting on of my hands okay the laying on of my hands upon you, praying for you. And there's a deposit that's made in us of the Holy Spirit. 
we have to fan that flame hallelujah see because the darkness is always trying to encroach see what i'm saying but no as long as you're prayed up and you're worshiping god and you're walking with the lord and you're mindful of the things of the holy spirit that darkness cannot do that it's just the light just keeps dispelling the darkness keeps dispelling the darkness amen hallelujah hallelujah verse 15 and what concord what concord in other words be in accordance mm. with hath christ with belial or with the devil how can we be in accord being in christ with the devil in any kind of way how can amen. we be amen or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel mm. disbelieving okay the heathen the he infidel amen so it's so many things in the word really touch on the thing of not being unequally yoked together that's not only in marriage but it is in friendship in business in every area right. and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God has said I will dwell in them and walk in them what does that mean in other words, Hallelujah. he can use us to walk where he wants to walk in this world. Hallelujah. That's what that means. Hallelujah. Okay? And I will be their God. And they shall be and my people. they shall people. be my people. That's why he says, I will dwell in them. Just like waking up, feeling that trembling yeah. of the Almighty God That's right. in my spirit. That's right. I will dwell in them. And walking. It's such an awesome oh, feeling, hallelujah. boy. Such an awesome feeling. See, God home. walks in the grocery store when you're walking <laughs> in the grocery store. I'm telling you right now, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Verse 17. Now, here it is, y'all. This is for Levi today. This here is for the is. born and new ones. Here it is. Wherefore, come out. Come out. Get away from depart come out from among, from among them, them. And those be, who those who are from among them those who are actively coming against the truth those who are not walking with the Lord those who are rejecting the truth of God's word those who are outright rejectors of God okay he didn't say don't witness to people mm -hmm. he said you come out from among them those who are standing in false doctrine, standing in, in false ways, okay? See what I'm saying? And you have to have the Holy Spirit and discern. You discern these things. Come out from among them and what? Be ye separate. Separate. Be ye separate. In other words, you're divided <coughs> from them. You're set off by boundary. Yes. Separate. Say it the Lord. And touch not the unclean thing. <clears throat> Don't attach yourself to it. Amen. Don't attach yourself to the unclean thing. Touch not the unclean, the unclean thing. thing, the impure thing, uh, lewd. Okay? Don't attach yourself to that. Amen. And I will... Receive you. Receive you. Hallelujah. Receive right See that there. condition? God is so good, man. The Lord is so plain on what he says in the word. Are, is any of us going to say, well, that's not what it means? Really? That's what it says. Wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not, don't attach yourself, touch not the unclean thing, the lewd thing, the immoral thing, the impure thing, don't attach yourself to that. And then he proceeds to say, and I will receive you. Well, what does it mean if you do attach yourself? He will not receive you. Isn't That's what that, it means. Isn't that what that means? Yes. It is That's what right. that means. What did Jesus say? 
He said, hey, you get it right with your brother before you come to me, right? Don't come to me asking for something when you're holding a grudge against that guy over right. there for what he did. Right. See, uh-uh. Or, you, get it right. you know, you're you're all mad because someone spoke some truth to you. I remember this guy years ago, and he was listening to the broadcast all the time, every day. And he was getting blessed, and, and God was also piercing his heart because it was like pinning him to the wall, right in his circumstances, right what he was doing. And he got mad. Boy, he got madder than everything at John and I didn't talk to us for six months but then he came back and he wrote and he said you know what I was really mad for six months at y'all for what you said <laughs> but he said God showed me that he spoke those words through you to me right and pinned me completely to the wall because that was exactly what I was doing right. in my situation and I didn't like it that that you got me pinned to the wall, that God <laughs> pinned me to the wall like that. Right, he said, I yeah. couldn't get away from it. I couldn't get away from it. The words just rang in my <laughs> mind that, and heart. But he said, I'm coming to you today telling you I'm sorry and also telling you thank you. Amen. I love it. For speaking that word that God gave and for speaking it the way you spoke it. Because the way you spoke it is the way I needed it to hear it. It caused it Amen. to just pin me right to the wall. Right. And I couldn't get away from it. I couldn't wiggle out from under it or anything. It was there. I was having to face it. And so many people over the years have tried to get us to change what we speak and how oh, we speak. Oh, they try it. to get no. change what we say, no. change how we deliver it, no. change everything. Hey, yeah. No, listen. Those people are not our boss. God's that's right, our that's boss. That's right. Okay? But the devil's trying to put a chip in our brain, okay, <laughs> so that they can control us. And yeah. this is really happening out in the world. Mm -hmm. See? People are lining up, you know, to get a chip put in their brain so they, they'll know more. Of the, they'll be totally controlled by the enemy. See? Oh. God says, come out from among them and be ye <laughs> separate, saith the Lord. Oh. Touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. And you know what? That has so much to do with not compromising. That's right. Because a lot of people, some even profess Christians, they are bedding up with the unclean and the lewd under the guise of, I've got to speak to him about Jesus. Under the guise of, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't want to offend them. Well, better be concerned about offending God. Amen. Hallelujah. Father God, thank you for this word today. Bless your holy name. Lord, you are so good to instruct us in your righteousness today. Oh, we bless and praise your holy name. Let this word have its perfect work in all of our hearts, Lord, and remind us of your great and awesome ways past finding out, Lord. We want to search for you more and be seeking you, Lord, in the inner man, and know by your word, Lord, that you are with us. We know it. And we can walk in your way today because your word says that Jesus Christ is our righteousness. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Your word says we are the righteousness of God in Christ. Hallelujah. And Father, keep us today. Keep us all in the straight and narrow way and crush the devil, dragging down under our feet. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we're here Monday through Friday, 6 a.m. Central, and then at 8 a.m., the morning devotional, which is always real good. And just listen to that. Our email is the Kings Road 2000 at gmail.com and behold a new thing at yahoo.com amen amen hallelujah the lord bless you and keep you and make his holy face to shine upon you the lord our god lift up his holy countenance upon you grant you peace the lord be gracious unto you in his name authority character and dominion be in and upon your life today as you go forth conquering and to conquer hallelujah walking 
in the fullness and in the humility of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen.